My name is Tadesa. I'm the wheat breeder at Ikada. I'm going to talk about the wheat breeding activities, progresses made at Ikada on behalf of my colleagues listed here. So our focus is mainly in sub-Saharan Africa and Siwana regions. And as you can see from the slides, uh, currently in 2017, uh, more than 750 million tons of wheat have been produced at global level. And except a few years, at global level, there has never been shortage of wheat. But in the Siwana region and in Sub-Saharan Africa regions, there has been always a gap between demand and supply. And this is because of the um, low yield gap. And also we have uh, population pressure and of course the many challenges, biotic, abiotic stresses. But in reality, in this part of the world, in the Siwana and Sub-Saharan Africa region, there is a huge potential to expand with both horizontally and vertically. Uh, especially in Sub-Saharan Africa, if you see, they do import more than 17 million tons of wheat annually. And the national government says they have to pay $6 billion. The issue is, if we have the land, if we have the resources, can't we grow wheat and feed the population locally? So, from our perspective, what we can do is to develop a germplasm which is widely adapted and high yielding, resistant to the major uh, biotic and abiotic stresses, which in our environment are drought and heat, the most important abiotic stresses, and the rest is especially yellow rust and stem rust, and of course some of the important sector pests like heath and fly and the Russian wheat aphid. These are the, the key challenges. So our objective is to develop a widely adapted germplasm combining these biotic and abiotic stresses with reasonable, acceptable uh, quality. Of course, at the international center also, it is very important to build the national capacity, especially human capacity, so that the germplasm developed beta cement or aticada can be utilized effectively for direct release or for parentage purposes by the national programs. As all of you know, neither cement nor aticada do release varieties. Variety release is the responsibility of the national programs. So you may ask uh, how two centers, ICADA or CIMIT, uh, from one location can develop a germplasm that can be utilized worldwide, adapted worldwide in various agroecology environments. We do follow key strategies and approaches. One is we divide the world uh, with into mega environments. In terms of ICADA, we have two mega environments, rain-fed and irrigated. And also we use a shuttle breeding approach, an inter-country shuttle breeding, and also we uh, apply markers for some of the traders. We use synthetic quizzes, uh, hot spots, and kilocation yield uh, testing to develop a germplasm which is widely adapted in the region. Uh, our key locations are strategically selected. Uh, for example, Morocco, uh, it is important for uh, drought. Uh, the Turkey in Izmir is uh, important for uh, rust screening, both for adult and seedling uh, resistance. Lebanon, the turbulent station, is very important for cold drought and also for wide adaptation. Sudan is a global uh, platform, the Wadmiran station for heat tolerance, and the highest yield potential for spring wet bread wheat is at seeds station in Egypt. And of course, Ethiopia is very important, especially the Kulumsa location for uh, screening of the germplasm for biotic stresses. So on annual basis, we do uh, carry out more than 3,000 crosses, uh, 2,000 double haploids, and we uh, annually evaluate more than 20,000 hedros, on average 3,000 preliminary yield trails, and a thousand of advanced lines. And we evaluate this germplasm also for different quality traits, and we compose international nurseries uh, and distribute to our national partners upon request. Another activity we do carry out is uh, pyramiding of the uh, major genes. Uh, we have received some of the genetic stocks from uh, Dr. Evans, and uh, we have made uh, 
uh, using the functional markers to pyramid the, some of the most important genes for rests, for uh, septoria, fusarium, and also for his young fly. Uh, sometimes with these functional markers, what we have observed is uh, the markers may indicate uh, positive resistance, but uh, when we take out to the field, the reaction may be susceptible. So it is important always to uh, consider how close the functional marker is to the trait of interest. Uh, I have to acknowledge this important germplasm from uh, Dr. Evans that has contributed so much to the program. Uh, we have uh, phenotyped uh, the elite germplasms. Uh, Kumars, uh, my colleague from Zmir, annually evaluated our elite germplasms, and there are quite uh, lots of resistant germplasms uh, in the, uh, for both adult and seedling plant resistance at Zmir. We have also evaluated at Kulumsa, Ethiopia, for the yellow rust, stem rust, leaf rust, septoria, and as you can see, there are lots of uh, germplasms with high level of uh, resistance. And also, the Mershush station, uh, which most of you uh, might be able to see if you can extend your uh, uh, flight for one day, going to Mershush, that is the main station of Ikarda, you would see how uh, yellow rust and septoria is uh, an important uh, disease in this region. We have also evaluated the germplasm for septoria, uh, both at key locations and uh, seedling level using mixtures of 10 isolates. Our pathologist, Sajid, has made this activity possible. And he has come up with some of the illicit germplasms combining resistance across locations for septoria and also both at adult and seedling level. Uh, our entomologist, um, Dr. Bosini, uh, also works on our elite germplasm to characterize for his fly resistance. And as you can see, there is uh, variation for the his fly resistance. And some of these resistance lines are also drought tolerance high yielding, and they are synthetic derived uh, lines. And we have also identified from the synthetic genotypes Two of them combining both sun pest and hessian fly resistance. We have developed a double haploid population, and soon we will know what kind of genes do they possess. Uh, the key location yield trail activities within Morocco, Lebanon, and also in uh, Sudan we carried out, and the general plan uh, performance across location indicates um, from the best adapted checks that we have. Uh, there are quite um, a uh, number of good lines uh, working across locations. So this genotype that combines uh, high yield at Mershus for terminal drought stress and high yield at Wad Medani. So the, um, uh, in the map, the right corner, that is where the best genotype is, combining both drought tolerance and uh, heat tolerance. If you see last year, for example, at Mercius, where we have only 204 millimeter of rainfall after planting. Under that condition, there was severe terminal stress, but the germplasm do perform up to 5.5 tons per hectare. This is a large plot, it's not a small plot. And same genotypes performed up to 11 tons. Of course, this is a highly irrigated uh, site in Tarbul, Lebanon, and also up to 12 tons per hectare in seed station. But at Wad Madani, some of the genotypes, the maximum we can get because of its stress is the 5.1 tons per hectare level. So what we do normally before distributing international nurseries is we see the genotype because these trials are carried out across locations, same genotypes. So the genotypes, for example, in the first graph, uh, the right corner uh, genotypes indicate that they do, care, they do possess high yield at seed station, yield potential, and also at uh, Wad Madani for heat tolerance. And the next slide, the genotypes, they do have high yield potential and also drought tolerance. So this means this same group of germplasms do have high yield potential, drought tolerance, and heat tolerance. 
We, uh, we characterize also the germplasm for different quality traits, for gluten strengths, protein, and the frequency of the high molecular weight glutens. And as you can see, there is a quite diverse germplasm for quality traits. And we do also characterize the germplasm for the thousand kernel weights. As you can see, there is a difference across locations. In Marshush, the thousand kernel weight is low because of yellow rust, whereas uh, in seeds, it is because of heat stress, but at seeds, which is uh, an optimum environment, the thousand kernel weight, which is indicative of protein, is high. So in general, from the, uh, based on this, we distribute two observation nurseries, one for heat tolerance, one for uh, general uh, uh, rainfall environments, each containing up to 200 uh, elite materials. Three yield trails, one for heat tolerance, one for uh, uh, dryland environment, the drought, and the other one, elite spring bread yield trail, each containing 50 genotypes into replications. And also on annual basis for some selected countries for a project, 12 sub-Saharan African countries, we distribute annually elite germplasms. The bulk of the germplasm is distributed in the Siwana and sub-Saharan Africa region, but also ger the germplasm is distributed to Australia, Europe, and North and South America based on a request. And in the last five years alone, more than 50 wheat varieties have been released from ICADA origin materials. Also, we have analyzed the international nursery we distributed. And as you can see, the red line is the best line from the nursery sent, and the blue line is the best national check. So in every location, you can check this in the international nursery database in ICADA, there are at least one elite genotype that beats the national check, from Australia to in the Siwana and Sub-Saharan Africa regions. We've, ch we've checked the genetic gain in Mershush station by growing the released cultivars of Morocco and our elite genotypes together. For the sake of um, protecting the yield, we sprayed the nursery uh, with uh, fungicides. And what we get is uh, an abs absolute genetic gain of 96 kilogram per hectare per year basis, uh, which is uh, at 2.5% per year relative genetic gain, which is quite good. And uh, the lines starting from the arrow to the right direction, these are the elite germplasms currently available within the ICADA program. So you can see the huge yield difference, while the national checks are at around four tenths after uh, protecting for yield through a fungicide application, but the elite germplasms go up to seven tenths in Marshush. Uh, we have also carried out such similar uh, studies in Sudan for heat tolerance. As you can see, the elite genotypes perform above the best check, that is Imam, which is Attila 7. And there is an absolute genetic gain of 51 kilogram per year, whereas uh, relative genetic gain is about 1.4% per year in Sudan under heat stress. This is uh, genetic gain uh, in at seeds station, which is uh, highest yield uh, potential site in Egypt. Uh, we have an annual uh, genetic gain of 211 kilogram per hectare per year, which is 2.3% uh, per year. Uh, in, the, in the two stations, seeds and um, and what Marani, we didn't apply fungicide because there is no disease there. So we have tried to analyze, so what are the most important traits in this drought uh, and high yielding material? So some of the students carried out these activities. So as Matthew indicated earlier, canopy temperature and biomass, they are really correlated with uh, yield. The lower the canopy, the higher the biomass, the higher the grain yield. That is what these two graphs indicate. And when we analyze the pedigree of the germplasm, most of these elite high yielding drought and heat tolerant germplasm are synthetic derived lines. And when we see the synthetics origin, it is from the triticum decocoids. 
that tells you how this uh, source of germplasm can be also in the future better exploited, utilized. We have carried out uh, association mapping states for different traits uh, for yellow rust resistance, heat tolerance in the past, and many QTLs have been reported uh, for also uh, heat tolerance at uh, Egypt, uh, Sudan, and in Syrian locations. But what is interesting is, for the last three years, a QTL on chromosome 5A becomes stably appearing for heat tolerance at Wad Medani. So we will validate this QTL, and uh, we will uh, be able to utilize this QTL for marker acid selection. And we have checked this QTL is independent of uh, flowering date. Another activity we undertake also is capacity building. Uh, as I have said earlier, um, we, unless and otherwise there are trained breeders who can utilize the germplasm effectively, then developing a germplasm may not be as productive as it should be. So in ICADA we have established an annual wheat improvement cut since 2012, and on an annual basis more than 20 breeders do participate uh, in the wheat improvement course from Siwana and Sub-Saharan African regions, supported by different projects. Uh, there are also uh, PhD and MSc students working uh, in the program in collaboration with the national programs and national universities. Currently, there are 13 PhD and MSc students uh, actively undertaking their research. And some of the students, they have uh, their posters out there, Sahar for uh, drought tolerance, Samira in hybrid wheat, and Tamrat in uh, rust resistance. Uh, for more details, what I said about the strategies and methodologies, uh, you can check uh, the publications in the ICADRA's uh, webpage. But in summary, I would like to say uh, our strategy in developing uh, rust resistance genes is by combining major genes with a minor gene background. And uh, this needs to be strengthened further through the utilization of functional markers. But we need to be careful also uh, when we use the functional markers since we experienced that marker positive bad uh, susceptible right out there in the field. Uh, the key phenotyping platforms, this is a very uh, successful approach and we are lucky enough in the, in the, in the fact that for the fact that we are based here where most of uh, uh, the stresses are there. We have uh, Sudan for heat tolerance, we have uh, Ethiopia or Morocco for uh, the restes, and for drought, uh, we have Morocco as a global phenotyping platform. So we would like to collaborate with all of you, uh, attaching your students, sending your journal plasms, and we can uh, make utilize of these uh, phenotyping platforms together for the betterment of wheat. Uh, strengthening the the pre-breeding programs, especially as you have seen it, the pre-breeding materials that we use, the synthetics, they have been developed using uh, maybe certain durum wheat varieties and a few edge of south shy lines. But we could exploit further the unutilized synthetic genotypes or a different durum background to develop new synthetic weights. So this area could be strengthened in the future. And in ICADA, we have uh, quite good sets of uh, fig sets. They need to be utilized uh, for gene mining and gene integration purposes. Uh, and we believe also in the, in, the, in, the, in the area where we live, especially in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa and Siwana region, it is possible to strengthen and increase wheat production both through vertical and horizontal expansion and thereby lowering yield gaps and also uh, utilizing inputs. For this, uh, ICADA is actively uh, engaging with the national partners through the food security project to outscale the available technologies uh, in which, and also currently through the TAC project to promote heat tolerant with technologies, improved agronomic management practices to the farmers, of course, in very close um, partnership with the national program in order to narrow the yield gap. So, uh, as I said earlier, a very close collaboration and partnership with the national programs, and of course, 
the entire wheat community is very important to increase uh, wheat productivity, wheat production, and to reduce hunger in this 21st century. I would like to acknowledge the ICADA wheat team, the whole, uh, the MSc and PhD students who are uh, tirelessly working with us, uh, the national programs in the Siwana and sub saharan Africa regions, and the key nurses where we are located also in Ramoroko, uh, Egypt, uh, AUB and Arek in Lebanon, AR Ethiopia, ARC Sudan in Turkey. And the funding mostly comes from uh, the listed uh, organizations. But today I would like to also acknowledge BGRI because BGRI let us uh, uh, registration free uh, attendance for some of uh, the 28 participants who are here. And I uh, would like to applaud for uh, BGRI for this opportunity. <laughs>